friends, missed you guys, glad to be back. I was on vacation for a few weeks, but I'm here, I'm hanging out. And you're watching Our Squad episode 97. Very quick recap of what's been going on for the past two weeks. We have launched a teaching series, which is just a collection of messages of us bringing ideas and thoughts around a specific topic at Renovation Church, titled, for the one. And for the one is this idea, this value, this mission that we have at Renovation Church and at our squad, which is basically the idea that God is for, God cares about every single person that has ever lived and is ever going to live. And because God cares about every person that's ever lived and is ever going to live, we, as followers of God, as followers of Jesus, should care about every single person that has ever lived or will ever live. And God wants us to make a difference in the world, to spread his love to show others who Jesus is, that he's given us the best way to live and that he's given us possible opportunity to have relationship with God, right? That's pretty crazy. And God wants us to share that with the rest of the world. And in order to share that with the rest of the world, to make big impact across all communities and countries and nations, it starts with us just sharing that with one person. The way to make big impact is to start small. So we wish maybe sometimes that we could go tell every single person about Jesus, you know, all in one space. Let's just get everyone together at one time and then just preach one message and then everyone will hear. But that's probably not going to happen. But what can happen is us doing for one person what we wish we could do for everyone. So we've been talking about what it looks like if every single person Every single person watching this video right now, every single one of you, sixth grade all the way to 12th grade, guy and girl, leader, me, it doesn't even matter. What if every single person saw themselves as having a specific and unique role in that mission? We get to be a part of the mission that God has in the world and we get to be for the one. That's being for the one person who's close to us but far from God. In the last two weeks, we've been talking about that idea. Week one, we had some conversation with some students from our squad about the future building and home of Renovation Church. Like, we're, we're gonna build an actual building, which is pretty crazy, near Kiwanis Park, that's gonna be this section of hope and love and grace and mercy that for hundreds of years to come, kids and students and adults and grandparents are gonna be able to come to this place and hear the amazing life-changing message of the grace of God. And then last week, Joey talked a little bit about Luke chapter 15, the lost chapter. This chapter where Jesus explains these three stories about what it means to be lost, what it means to be separate from God, what it feels like to be separate from God, but then also the heart of God, which is to seek out lost people and lost things and to restore and bring them back to himself. Jesus even said clearly to his followers and to the people he was teaching, he came to seek and to save the lost. And as we're going to see today, that's not just a job for Jesus, that's a job for every single person to see themselves as a part of the story in the bigger story that God's writing, to connect our story to God's bigger story so that we can have great purpose and impact. We have a part to play in this. And the For the One series is about discovering the unique role that you play. All right, so I don't know if you know this or not, but every single Wednesday night, we have our squad groups that meet around the top soul Hampstead area. And we have a little over a hundred students that attend our squad every single week. Yeah, I know, not all in one house, not all in one space, but we have a little over a hundred students that attend our squad in some form or fashion at some location across the area. Now, what would it look like if every single one of those students, a hundred students, all had one person that they were specifically praying for, that they were specifically inviting to be a part of what God is doing, and they were having specific conversations with them about what it means to follow Jesus, what it means to live life with Jesus. What could happen if all hundred of us came together and each person was having those types of conversations, was sending out those types of invitations? our group could double in size. We could potentially, right, go from 100 to 200. And then if those 200 people all start doing that, it goes from 200 to 400. You, are you, you you're tracking with me? That, my friends, is what we call community impact. So I want you to take a look at this, because this is what I mean by community impact. 
what you're getting ready to see is what community impact looks like. And so here's kind of a quick little definition, right? Community impact basically means that people should know and be impacted by the message of Jesus in our community. And if Renovation Church is here, and if we're saying we're for the one, and we're saying we're followers of Jesus, that means that Renovation Church doesn't just care about the people inside of our church. Our squad doesn't just care about the people who come to our squad. We care about the people who don't come to our squad yet. We care about all the students that right now are sitting at home on their couches, playing Xbox, watching Netflix, scrolling TikTok. We care about all those people because those people aren't here and chances are those people don't know about Jesus. So what should happen is that we come to our squad, we come to Renovation Church to celebrate what God's doing, to praise Him, to, to show Him He's worthy, to prioritize Him in our lives, right? We come together to be inspired, motivated, to celebrate, and to, and, and to really leave with a hunger for going out into the community to impact the community. So let me explain this a little bit more in detail. What you're looking at right here is uh, if you can see all the way, you know, right here, got that little dot on the screen right there. That is the future location of the home of Renovation Church. That little, that little, that little dot right there. Yep, this guy right here. And you can see it's pretty uh, positioned, you know, right in the center of kind of the Hampstead topsoil area. So here's what that means. It's pretty amazing. When we look at all the way down into Wilmington, all the way up here through Burga, all the way down up, you know, up through Jacksonville and back around Topsail Beach, Holly Ridge, Sneeds Ferry, Hampstead, Topsail, Surf City, Scotts Hill, Ogdenport, like all of it. This is area that God has positioned our church positioned you as a student to have community impact. You're not responsible for community impact in California or in Oregon or in Texas or Wyoming. You're responsible for community impact showing others who Jesus is in this place right here. Right now, I'm kind of getting a vibe that people in our community and honestly, people all over the world are feeling hopeless. We've got the lasting impacts and continued impacts of COVID-19, the global pandemic, which is still very real. We've got the impacts right now of people who've been losing their minds and going crazy over the elections and things happening in the political scene in our country. We've got social media that's honestly just making us all crazy, probably. We've got so many things going on. School's weird and jacked up. Jobs are crazy. Financial issues are going on. People are just on edge. And I think a lot of people have lost control of things and they're just feeling like they can't see a way out. They don't have a hope for the future. and They don't have anything to place the full weight of their trust and hope into because everything's changing and shifting and moving around. But here's what I want you to know. Why all this matters, why community impact matters is because the hope for our community is found in the followers of Jesus in this community. I'll say that again. The hope for our community, the place we call home, is found in the followers of Jesus within this community. You're like, all right, Jordan, where'd you get that? How do I know really if that's true or how does that make sense? The hope for people in this area is just found in the followers of Jesus? Check this out, 2 Corinthians 5, specifically verses 11 all the way through the end of the chapter. We're not gonna read the whole thing. You can do that in your small groups. I'm just gonna read a little section here. But the, the subtitle is called, We Are God's Ambassadors. All right, so we got this guy, Paul, used to be Saul, got changed by the hope, the love, the grace of Jesus. Now he writes to encourage and teach all these other little churches, these house churches and these churches all across uh, different countries in the world to encourage them to continue to follow Jesus. Jesus. And in this first section right here, we are God's ambassadors. Uh, he basically says, what you need to understand is that every single person is cared for by Jesus. Jesus died for all. Jesus died one time for all people. He was for the one. He was for everybody. Christ's love was for every single person. So he's like, look, with that in mind, here's what you need to understand. Here's what you need to do. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. Because Jesus was for everyone and we're following Jesus, we've stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. What's a human point of view? A human point of view is, what can this person do for me? What can I get from this person? What can I take from this person? Me making judgments, assumptions based on what they look like, who they are, what I perceive them to be, how I feel like they hurt me. We judge them from a human sinful point of view. And usually probably we're wrong about a lot of our judgments and assumptions. We're usually a lot 
more like and alike people than we think that we are. And so Paul says, at one time, we thought of Jesus that way. We thought of Jesus merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. That's what's crazy is that a lot of people did the same thing with Jesus. They said, oh, he hangs out with this group of people. Oh, he talks this certain way. Oh, he acts this certain way. We thought the king and the Messiah was going to be different. There's no way this guy could be the king. What can we get from him though? What can we take from him? How should we treat him differently because of this? They, They were looking at him the wrong way. And now that they see Oh, wow. He went to the cross. He died. He came back to life. He's seated now with God in heaven. All these things have happened. Oh, whoa. We're now looking at Jesus in a different way. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ, anyone who has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, has become a new person. The old life is gone. Their old shame, guilt, regrets, past failures, patterns of behavior that were not healthy, that stuff's gone. That's not how you're viewed anymore. It says that a new life has begun. You get to hit the restart button. You get to now walk through life with God. You now get to walk through life in step with relationship with Jesus. And verse 18 says, all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Jesus, right? In the beginning, sin happened. It separated us from God. But now God has been on this rescue mission to bring all of his people, right? For the one, for every single person who's ever lived. Rescue mission to bring back every single person to a restored relationship with himself. God brought us back to himself through Jesus. Jesus was the sacrifice, right? That that we were supposed to be, but he made that sacrifice so we don't have to. And now look at this. God has given us the task of reconciling or restoring people back to him. Look at this. This is crazy. All this was a gift from God. God restored relationship between him and us. So now because of that, He's given us the task of restoring relationships between other people who live in our community. For God was in Christ, like he was with Jesus while he was a human, restoring the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us the wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Oh, why is it not highlighting? There it goes. We are Christ's ambassadors. Oh, this is my favorite part right here. God is making his appeal through us. Whew. Here's what that means. God has chosen to reveal himself to the world through me. God has chosen to reveal himself to the world through you. God has chosen for this community that we live in to know who he is through the people who follow him in this community. That is, that's wild. Cause God could just easily be like, yo, let me just show everybody who I am. Cool. It's me. I'm God. You know, no, it's not what he chose to do. He loves people so much. He cares about people so much. We're made in his image. He's designed us to be in a community and to be for a community. And so he is making his appeal. His reputation is dependent upon us. We speak for Jesus. When we plead and show the community, you need to come to God. You need to do life with Jesus. You need to follow Jesus. Trust me, it's just the way to go. It's the way to live. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. This is how a community is impacted right here. 2 Corinthians 5. It literally just lays it out for us right here. God restored relationship between him and mankind. And now he's given us the task of community impact, of restoring relationships between man and man, between woman and woman, between child and child, enemies, friends, family members, neighbors. He has given us the job of doing what he did on a scale here on earth in our own little communities and towns and cities and countries. You might not even know this, but this is actually where the name Renovation Church comes from. It's the website right here, the story of renovation, which is amazing. You should go read it sometime. And this right here, our foundation, the name renovation comes from the Bible in 2 Corinthians 5, where we see that Jesus gives us an opportunity to take an old life and make it new, renovated. It's restored. It's reconciled. It's set apart. It's brand new because of the life-changing power that's found in Jesus. And now we have the opportunity, look, to renovate communities one life at a time. We're for the one through the power of the gospel. It's crazy. 
It's crazy. We're for the one because people need hope. Your job is to be the best hope dealer and hope spreader so that community impact can happen in Topsail, at Topsail High School, at Surf City Middle School, at Dixon High School, at Topsail Middle, like all of these places where we interact with people who are like us. You see the brokenness, you see the hopelessness, you see the depression, the isolation, the fear, the anxiety, you see all that. But what would it look like for you to see and understand, wait, God did his part of the mission, restoring me to him, him to me. Now he's set me on a specific mission, which is to restore my relationship with other people and to restore relationships that other people have here in the community. And in doing that and being a part of that mission, as I am for the one, I am literally helping people see that they don't have to live that old life anymore. They can begin a new life with Jesus. So the first step would be, if you don't have a one, if you have not yet identified someone close to you, but far from God, man, you sh like don't even leave tonight without figuring out who that is. Just take a second to think about the people close to you. Take a second to think about the people who need hope, people that you know who just don't see a way out, who just don't see hope for the future, who, who can't see anything beyond all the junk that's going on in their life right now. And just take some time and pray for that person. Go back and watch the past two weeks of videos where we talked about the future hope and vision of what this movement of Renovation Church and our squad can be. And if you already got your one, you're like, cool, I got it, I know who it is. Well, the next thing that we can think about and something for you to be in thought about, just you know, considering and figuring out is how can I be a part of the mission? What can I do to join God in his work of restoring the Hampstead and Topsail community? And there's a few different ways we talk about them all the time. It's your time, your talents, and your treasures. Your time. How can you give up time out of your day so that you can help other people see who Jesus is? Your treasures. What has God given you? Your resources, your dollars, things that you have that you can give in order to help advance this mission and finally your talents what has God uniquely designed you to be great at how's he wired you what personality has he given you what skills and gifts has he given you how can you serve how can you give back to God and help people see who he is through the way that God has made you to be so if you got questions about any of this if you need if you need help um, figuring out who your one is if you need help figuring out well where could I serve I don't even know what I'm good at, like what gifts do I even have? If you got any questions about For the One, about figuring out how to find your one or anything that we've talked about over the past couple of weeks, or you're just looking to connect and get some more information, we've created a real simple thing. So once you take your phone out and text For the One, all one word, to 97,000. For the One to 97,000 so that we can help you take your next step in being an active participant in the work that God's doing in the world to restore and to reconcile communities and relationships to each other so that they can be restored back to God. The hope of our community is found within the followers of Jesus in our community. God is making his appeal to the world through you and through me.